Ladies, hello. Thank you so much for joining us on the Ladies Power Lunch show. I have a wonderful guest with me today, and she's joining us all the way from Canada. I'm so excited. It is definitely an international sisterhood. So, Susan, will you tell us who are you and what is it that you do? Oh, Dr. Divya, thank you for having me here today. Yeah, I'm a book coach and editor. I've, I'm a professional writer from way back. I started my career years and years and years ago in journalism. And then I worked in government communications and in corporate communications. And in, I was a marketing copywriter for a while. And all the way along, I wanted to write a book. I was just yearning to be a, a, an author. And probably some of your audience members have felt that, that tug at the heart too. I don't know, maybe you, well, you've written a book already. So you, you kind of know what that feeling is of just wishing that you could write a book. And, and so I did. And it uh, took me 13 years to write my first book. 13 years? 13 years, yeah. It, I, well, self-doubt. I, who am I to write a book? Who's going to read my book? I don't know how to write a book. I don't know how to publish a book. The, all of the, the mindset trash got rolling around between my ears and, and life was busy. You know, all of us can certainly attest to the fact that we have lots to do. I, I had a young family. My husband had a kind of an unstable career. So we moved around a lot mm -hmm. and it just, it, it doesn't, I didn't see how it was going to support my family more than anything. You know, I, it's a lot of time to write a book. It and, is. Yeah. So, so it took me a long time until finally, actually what galvanized me into action was that my husband got cancer and then he died. Okay. And, yeah, so at that point, I, I thought, okay, well, there are some dreams in my life that I haven't accomplished yet, one of which was writing this book. And, you know, if I, if I want to see if I can do it, I better get my giddy up on and get moving before I run out of time. And so mm -hmm. that's really when I knuckled down and finished the book. And, and that was the first of five. So I have five books now and, and writing books is one of the things that I do. So what are your five books? So the first one was a novel about a woman's experience of an abusive relationship. I, I did a lot of volunteer work for a women's shelter when I was doing a lot of PR, PR work. Uh, they, the shelter in my community opened a new shelter. And so I was involved uh, quite a lot in promoting the fact that we have a second shelter now, which um, in a lot of communities, there's a real lack of space for women who are in abusive situations to have a safe place to go. And what really struck me when I was involved with that group was that, well, wait a minute, these are intelligent, lively, brilliant women who are afraid for their lives. How does this happen? Mm -hmm. and, and so the novel that I wrote was an investigation of a woman's experience of going down that path into a relationship that was an unsafe, ultimately, place for her and uh, you know, kind of the psychology behind it and what the experience is like. And, and so that was a very um, transformative book for me. In Canada, I don't know what the stats are in the United States right now, but in Canada, one woman is murdered by her domestic partner every six days. So it's a, it, it's a you know, it's shocking statistic. Mm -hmm. That so, is shocking. Yeah. So I wrote that book really to shine a light on this incredible issue and, and examine it a little bit. So that was the first book. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with a traditional publishing contract and my publisher came to me the next year and said, well, have you got any short stories? We should do a collection of short stories. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I did. I had, you know, I'm a writer. I do that kind of thing. So the next book was a collection of short stories called Passages to Epiphany. And the third book was about how to write. The, my publisher came out and said, well, you've been writing a long time professionally. What about a book about how to write? So sure. that was book number three. So this was The Mechanics of Writing? Uh, it's called, um, well, actually, I've got it right here. It's called The Right Way. So this was, I don't know if you can see that. This was the first book, that's Shades of Teal. Mm -hmm. That was the first one. Passages to Epiphany was number two. Then The Right Way was number three. It's becoming a successful nice. writer. And then 
content marketing, that's, um, I, I was doing a lot of online content for a long time. And so that I, I've just recently segged out of that, but I wrote a book about how to, how to make content marketing work for your business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the most recent one was just this, this past June, I co-authored a book about the connection between relationship marketing and content marketing. So I like it. I yeah, like all so, of those books. Oh, thank you. I would yeah. invite you in the Ladies Power Launch Facebook group, that private group for all of us as women to share with each other. There is in the announcements um, a link to our reading list. I would invite you to attach your your books to the reading list so that we can have access to deciding if we want to read them. Oh, that's so kind of you, Dr. Devia. Thank you. Absolutely. We are all here to support each other. And we have friends joining us over on our Facebook group as well. Just want to say hi to all of them and to welcome them and say thank you so much for joining us over there. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about the whole idea of using writing to, you know, transform and to also build bridges. Sure. I So working as a book coach and editor now, I see this in my clients' work all the time that, that our, our books, you know, we, we often think of them as kind of a vanity project. You know, I really want to write a book, just as I was years ago thinking, well, who am I to write a book, you know? But really, um, if, if you are feeling that you're someone who would like to write a book and that book has been tapping you on the shoulder, I, I invite you to consider that that's the universe whispering in your ear saying, it's time, you know, it's time. Because I believe that we are writing our books with every day of our lives, that, that we are each thrown into experiences and families and work situations and, and relationships and that they all of these experiences affect us. And they affect us all in different ways. No, no two of us have the same lives. You know, that from the family you were born into, to the, the schools you went to, to the relationships you've had, the, the traumatic experiences and the magnificent experiences, they've all shaped you. And they've shaped you into the only person on the planet who can write the book that you were meant to write, that I, that I do believe in a higher power. And I think the, 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 love, the loving universe that is around us within us and above us is continually facilitating us to our best life and so if that book has tapped you on the shoulder and if you kind of feel that yearning then lean into it because that's the bridge to your future that leaning into that bridge crossing that bridge into writing that book is actually how we embrace our future so we're, we're in writing a book we're building a bridge to our futures as authors and I've found that that becoming, and I don't know about you, Dr. Davia, whether this has been your experience, but that that there's kind of an identity shift that happens when you become an author. I don't know if you felt that, but that you you become a new dimension of who you are. Yes. Like there's, there's a new label now that you get to add to your name, and it's a very exciting label. So that bridge, that book bridges you to that author future. And it also bridges you to your, your community in a way that it, you haven't been able to reach your community before. The, the vehicle of a written book is so powerful. And when we write a book that stirs someone's heart, then we are reaching them. We are bridging to them, no matter where they are or who they are. We, we can transcend all differences. And, and lay our book down in the hearts of the people that we're here to serve. And so I think that that bridge to our community is a very powerful bridge too. I, I like that. And you're getting a lot of likes and hearts over okay. here on Facebook with that, that statement. So I would say, let's dive a little bit more deeply into that bridging into your community. I mean, what does that really mean for you? And what does that mean for the community? Well, uh, oh gosh, where, where do we even start with that? I know, right? <laughs> well, I mean, if you think back to one of your favorite books, uh, so for me, there's so many of them. I think back to when I was a little girl and one of the, the most 
transformative books for me was Little Women. Yeah, I can I remember, remember you remember that book? It <laughs> wasn't that a beautiful book? It and was. I laughed and I cried and I, you know, it, 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 Louisa May Alcott has been dead for many, many years. Even by the time I read that book, she was long gone, but she was able to bridge to my heart through yeah. that book. And as part of the community, particularly of women, I don't know too many men who, you know, have resonated with that book or even read that book, but even through her life and her legacy, Louisa May Alcott made a huge difference in my life. And here we are talking on a public podcast in front of however many people are listening and will listen. And she is still alive through our conversation and still touching this community of women who are here to do great things in the world. And so anyone here listening could write a book too that might have that impact on a future generation. And it's, it's just a marvelous thing to be able to do that. Absolutely. I, I, I just embrace that. It's even worthy of pointing out that, like you said, she's been gone for a while now from this plane, but they had a movie made of her book just the other day. <laughs> so, you know, I have one of our members who I also consider a very dear friend, and she is a writing coach. She is so brilliant. And she said to me one day, how dare you not write your book? How dare exactly. you? Because yeah. the story or the things that you want to share, there's somebody out there who's losing sleep at night, needing to hear those messages, needing to hear those yeah. stories. And it might be that you're thinking, oh, who am I to write this book? But who are you not to? Exactly. And, and the universe has been preparing you to be the author of this book since the day you were born or before. You have been continually facilitated in every experience of your life to be the author of that book. So again, in not writing that book, you're saying you're, you're returning a gift to God. You know, God's trying to give you a gift here. And you're saying, no, no, I don't think I want that gift. No, thank you. It's like you don't do that to God. I guess. How dare you? <laughs> How do you, mean you don't want this gift. I'm, I've made you into the only person who can write this book. And you're telling me now you don't want to do that you're, because it is a, it's an act of service. It is an act of service. I love that. So for those people who are, and we do have quite a few people watching with us over here on Facebook. I want to say hi to Doreen. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Leslie. Um, Jamie says that the Louisa May Alcott book was also made into a play. So there you go. Oh, it's touching lives in so many ways, even so many years later. But for those of us who are maybe on the fence a little bit about publishing, what are some of the do's and don'ts that you would say we should give some consideration to? Um, in terms of writing a book or in terms sure. of publishing? Well, writing, publishing, the whole nine yards. Number one, don't give up. Keep going. It can be a debilitating experience to write a book. <laughs> Just because, I mean, in my experience, that first book, there was a lot of mind trash and a lot of self-doubt. And, and yet I kept going. And that opened up incredible opportunities for me personally and for me professionally. And so if I had given up partway through that process, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here in front of you now, actually. You know, this, this, um, the, the trajectory of your life will change if you keep going. And so just don't give up is number one. Mm -hmm. And also, I think for people who are already working on a book, the ideal situation is if you can be finding a routine time and day to do your writing. I like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my clients are, are healers. They're kind of in the healing field and energetics. You know, they work a lot with energy and that kind of thing. And, and it's very common among people like that to wait for a download. They, they feel they write best when the spirit strikes them. And that's, I, I do, I'm that way too. You know, there are some times when the writing just explodes out of us in this beautiful flow of language. And other times where you sit there and beat your head against the wall for a while, it's just not coming together the way you'd like it to. And what I found is if I sit myself down at the same time every week or the same time every day, and I make it a habit to open myself to the book, 
that creative genie comes and finds me. It knows where I am and it knows where to find me. And it knows you're going to be here at this yeah, specific time. Exactly. So I it made can a make promise. an appointment with you. <laughs> yes. I love this. Yes. This is amazing. <laughs> and, it, and it does. I, I've shared that with so many people who are resistant because it doesn't feel creative. It doesn't feel flow, but, but son of a gun, it works. <laughs> so. I agree with you. You know, I, there, i I'm following a lot of different writing Facebook groups and that mm. sort of thing. And the other day I was looking at one of the posts and she posted when you're in your writing process, there's like this huge chunk of time that you spend worrying about writing and then you spend this small amount of time writing. <laughs> so but true. if you get into that routine, that shrinks. That time spent worrying about, oh, I didn't do my pages. That shrinks yeah. because routinely, even if you're only doing a few pages each time you sit down, the work is getting done. I love that. That is so wonderful. Oh, it's so true. It's, it's, yeah. And, and know that you were born to do this. I, and I think that's the other thing. It's really helpful to shift your thinking around, and feeling around your book from, from a task that you want to accomplish mm -hmm. to a way of being in the world. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so writing a book is, is a pretty creative and linear experience, both at the same time. It's, you know, you, you want that creative flow and, and yet, Lin reading is a linear process so it needs to make sense that it needs to be logical there needs to be a structure um so it's very foreign to people when they start writing their first book as it was for me but it, if it becomes a way of being in the world and you shift that paradigm to i i am writing a book from i would like to write a book then it becomes a, a lot easier um you you become more in tune with this as part of your mission yes. but the here's the thing and this is something really cool that i've only recently realized in watching my clients and in my own process is that you know what writing involves a skill set writing a book is a skill set writing has a skill set but writing a book has a whole series of skill sets attached to it and when we're writing that first book, we don't have that skill set because we've never done it before. It's like sure. riding a bike. You know, you get yourself on that bike, you've never done it before. And you, so you, you create a skill set around riding a bike just as you create a skill set around writing a book. So people tend to get a little frustrated because they're so brilliant at so many other things and, and get a lot of validation from either their work or their, their way of being in the world or their community work or as they are in their families, they, there's validation involved there. Writing a book is a long project with not much validation. And, and when you're, you have a cumbersome skill around something, it's very easy to get discouraged. Yeah. So I implore people to understand that, okay, you're developing your skill set around writing a book. And so it's, of course, that first book will be more challenging. But once you have that skill set, the second book is easier. And then the third book is easier. And now my fifth book just rolled right out of me. So, so be patient with yourself as you develop your book writing skill set. These are some amazing tips for anybody who's ever written a book, anybody who's thinking about writing. I know almost everybody in our group has a blog or something, you know, some way that they're contributing to the writing process. And so any final words of wisdom that you'd like to share with everybody? Yeah, I, I invite people to look at themselves as being in a relationship with their book. You, and just like any relationship, you need to nurture that relationship. And you are an equal partner in that relationship. So be kind to yourself, number one. Love yourself as you are going about this. And also lay a little love on your book and, and treat it as a respected partner in your life. 
I love that. Treat your book as a respected partner in your life. I adore mm. that. That is so Thank wonderful. You. This is such a wonderful conversation. I feel as though we're going to have to schedule a part two because there's so many questions that I have that we haven't had an opportunity to get to. But I do know that you have a wonderful gift for our listeners today. Could you share a little bit more about what that is? Mm, sure. Well, I, as a writer, I really value good writing. And as an editor, Editor, I, I find that the, as people have better skill sets around writing, it costs them less money to get their book edited. And, and I want to save people money. And so I've created a three module how to write more powerfully course called Crossman's Crash Course in Effective Writing. And it has the three modules are um, one of them is on how to structure your writing more effectively. The second module is on how to write with better style. Yeah. And the third module is how to write for better reader engagement. So Ooh. I'm making that available and I, I can put the link in the chat box if you like. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's free for anybody who feels they would find it of value. Well, and, uh, that is just so generous and so amazing of you. And so what I am going to do is I am going to gift it to everybody who has joined us today everybody is a winner oh, and nice. i feel like that's just amazing so it's for those who are listening to us on our podcast for those of you who are watching us over on youtube it's crossman's crash course.com and that's crossman's with an s crossman's crash course.com now suppose there was somebody who they didn't want to take you up on your offer of your free thing, but they wanted to find a way to be in touch with you. How is that possible? What's your website? Oh, sure. Uh, my website is www. Now on the writing side of things, it's awakeningauthor.com. Mm -hmm. And people can get through to me. The email address is a little bit different. If you want to email me directly, happy to talk to anybody and answer your questions. It's Susan, S-U-S-A-N, at crossmancommunications.com. Awesome. Yeah. And you're on LinkedIn and you're on Facebook. Sure. So yeah. people can Connected. find you quite easily. Yes. And I know our community will love to reach out to you because what you are sharing is so valuable. Susan, it's been my honor to have you on our show today. I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to come into the Ladies Power Lunch studios all the way from Canada. Yay. <laughs> but not a, really, only virtually. Uh, well, what an honor to be with you too, Dr. Diggy. Thank you. And thank you for doing this, for making this space available to people to be a leader in the community and to invite people to be together, especially now, but always we need each other and we, we can't do it alone. So I honor you for doing this. Thank you. That means so much. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate you showing up. I just want to take a minute to remind you of one thing that we have, well, two things that we have going on right now. Next week, Thursday, we're going to be clearing the clutter of the media landscape that we find ourselves with right now. And we are going to be learning. It's a free webinar. I have myself plus some great experts joining me and we're going to be talking about what are the things that we need to do so that we can get seen, even though it's a crazy world out there right now. How can we get visible in all the clutter that is the media right now? How can we grow our impact and our incomes, even though the media landscape looks not very welcoming to all the information that we want to share about our businesses. And then the other thing that I want to remind everybody is that it's summit season. So Ladies Power Lunch Summit is coming up. It's going to be the 15th of March and we're in pre-sale for our tickets right now. Mm -hmm. The ticket prices are going to jump up as of 
February 1st. And so you want to definitely grab your ticket. The link to getting your ticket is right at the top of the feed in the Ladies Power Lunch group. So go ahead and get that. Or you can go to tickets.ladiespowerlunch.com and you can get your tickets there as well. Thank you everybody for joining us today. It's been such a wonderful, wonderful honor talking to Suzanne. And I'll see you guys on the next show. Like and subscribe. Bye.